Well, we're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll just quickly look at, uh, you know, a conversation around the aviation sector, quite interesting and very, very necessary, especially at the time where we're grappling with revenue as a country. Well, the Federal Executive Council, that's FEC, had approved the establishment of maintenance, repair and overhaul, uh, which is called MRO, Center for Aviation Industry. The federal government stated that the center would be first in West Africa and Central Africa as it would be one-stop shop for the overhaul, routine maintenance and service of aircraft. It would be done through a public-private partnership, that's the PPP with MASA, uh, AJW Consortium as the concessionary using the Build, Operate and Transfer, BOT and PPP model. The note that the center is approved for concession uh, for a period of 30 years and is expected to generate about $185 million within the period. ICRC added that uh, approval was given following the insurance of a uh, full business case, that's the FBC compliance certificate by the ICRC to the Federal Ministry of Aviation and would be first in West Africa. It was said that the establishment of the private sector driven MRO center was critical for diversification and reposition of the aviation industry as it would also address the demand for aircraft maintenance in Nigeria, not just Nigeria, like I mentioned, West Africa and of course Central Africa. Now, currently, my interest is to know that the region. Uh, do not have an international standard MRO and therefore urgently requires one to ease business and facilitate growth and contribute to the gross domestic product uh, you know, of the nation and also of the region as well. Uh, we have this morning joining us a stakeholder, Lumideo Huayo, Assistant Secretary General Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative right here in Lagos. Uh, Lumideo, it's good to have you join us. Happy New Year and happy birthday as well. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody else. All right, then. I'd like to share your thoughts. I mean, seven years after, you know, this idea has been conceived, uh, we're still here. What do you think is responsible for the stalling of the process? Well, um, uh, a, a lot of things. Um, the, the roadmap had so many things, so many, there are so many pies on the table. And uh, when we have so many pies, it might be very difficult to pick which one would, uh, would be a priority. And I think um, um, the COVID uh, uh, issue came up. A fluctuating naira to the dollar was also an issue. Then, uh, and I think also there should be that that uh, what that interest, uh, uh, different interests were involved in that uh, by project, uh, hence uh, the delay. Again. Um, we're here now. We're about barely seven, six months to the end of this, uh, for five months to the end of this tenure. Uh, we are, we are coming with this approval of uh, starting uh, um, uh, starting uh, from ground zero. Uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 it has been approved. I, I, what I don't understand, what I'm not sure now is whether the investors will move in before me because uh, knowing Nigeria and, and, and their inability to keep to agreements, uh, they, there might be tradition and uh, so let's wait, let's wait for the new government to come in uh, before we begin to throw uh, train them. But what, what I've noticed is that almost in all the agreements they've made, they're, they're, they're signing in the last minute, it's government that's bringing out all the money that the investors are holding back and then uh, trying to see what happens uh, after after May 31st. But, um, you know, according to some reports in different quarters, uh, you have rightly stated that the reason for the delays that the government has been very difficult, they're rigid in, in terms of the approval and the entire process. And also there might also be a conflict of interest. I I'd like you to throw more light on that. Is that the case? I'm, I, I, I'm looking at. I'm looking at. I don't think rigidity held uh, delayed this particular project. The rigidity has delayed uh, uh, other MROs from coming in. There, are, there, are, there are people interested. There are uh, um, airports available that have been able to speak to uh, international partners to come in and invest. But that rigidity of always going through the minister to sign. Uh, that that forced the, 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 to sign for for it to be approved before the process starts. That's the problem. Now, if the minister is interested, he has, he has an interest in his own project which has just been approved. There's no way you can he can sign for other competitors, and that is what is holding this country down. We we, we 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 said the minister has no business with maintenance, maintenance and repair. It is the regulator, the NCAA, that will look at your application, look at your document, and see whether you are competent and, uh, and and good to go. But unfortunately, you have to go through the minister. Then that minister has an interest in. 
in, in putting one in place uh, called the PPP that, that has just been approved. How do we, how would he approve other other other, other MROs to come in? And we are holding ourselves down in this country when we do not hold the tenets of is, is of doing business. So, um, if I got you clearly, you're saying that there's an interest, and the interest is that, you know, uh, the likes of the minister have a business where they are thriving from in the whole, uh, you know, instrument. is participating in the MRO. So, it, that has delayed on that copy Jesus from coming on board. But they can't, now, this, now that this, this has been approved, maybe they will not, they will lose, they will do the uh, give, give some ease and, and uh, ease, ease of participation now and allow other investors to come in. We, do, we, we need more than one. Mm. And there are different variants of aircraft in the world. So we need more than one uh, uh, MRO in the country. And we have the capacity to do it. These people are not asking for government money. They want to use their money. So there's only holding them back. All in this approval and then, then they say how they, they work this out with different state with the different airports uh, owned own, own by fund on those owned by the state government. Mm. But, but, but I like what, to... What, is, what, mm. what you really want is the development of the industry. Not in line with what's the, with, not in line with the roadmap alone. We want the development of the industry because the, the ages of this government is ending is ending in the next five months. So we cannot you cannot tie us to the roadmap alone. We need we need we need that that, that people should be able to express themselves. We need more investors and we need, we need the aviation industry to contribute to the uh, to the GDP of the, of the economy. And we can and we can only do that when we allow more participation, when we allow more investors and allow and, and, and allow uh, the private sector to, to, to thrive within within the industry, not being regulated and held down by government policy and government participation. But let's talk about, you know, the benefit this actually holds eventually, you know, all of the bureaucratic process and all of this interest taken away. Uh, what does this mean for the Nigerian economy and the aviation sector? Oh, very well, it's, it's, it's a win-win for everybody if it comes, if, 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 if it starts, uh, if, if, if you can get, get off the ground and if you can get more. Uh, what you have now is that you find out that one of our airlines is saved the cost of ferrying aircraft out, out of the country for repairs and maintenance uh, that cost of flying it out and paying in dollars now you can pay you can pay in naira you can save money for filling the aircraft and paying crew at them and uh, all of that hotel accommodation associates and all this comes, comes in dollar and now the dollar is not even friendly so i think that is it's going to some of the uh, airlines nigerian airlines in particular then therefore for generally you expect that uh, um, uh, airlines within the sub region and airlines even outside the sub region that that uh, feel that uh, the cost of uh, just like like people go to India for medicals. We look at the cost of coming to Nigeria, looking at the Naira payment, and probably we would not say, well, if, if it is satisfied, certified, then they would rather come to Nigeria because of the because of the value of a Naira or, or the by, or, or the lower cost. So you are, you, are, you tend to attract uh, airlines to, to come, which bring more revenue to the country. Again, there's what they call the technical stop. Maybe uh, people flying over Nigeria to order to another country, and if they have issues, uh, why meet uh, they will consider Nigeria as, as, as a place to stop because they know there are, there are repair organizations there that can help look into look at look at the aircraft. So it's going to attract some investment. It's going to improve improve manpower. It's going to increase uh, specialty, and that's and, and once once you improve specialty, attract more power. That means that more more people will employ, more taxes will be paid to the government, and additional um, contribution to GDP will also increase. So it's a, it's a win 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 for habit, but we should not restrict ourselves that it must must be the one owned by the federal government that must operate. We need to allow that to come to come in. Well, well, now that we're you know getting closer to a transition from a certain another one government to another, uh, do you see the next government uh, being responsible and all of these processes not being? Uh, you know, a case, especially when you have said, oh, uh, the minister itself has a hand, has an interest, and, and that's also causing a huge problem. So, moving forward, 2023, do you see us making progress and having that running? Let me let me make let me make some clarification there. Uh, uh, when I said the minister has an interest, I, 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 I am not saying the minister has an interest in the project per se. What I'm saying is that why should the minister why why, why is it designed that the minister must approve and sign every investment coming in into the indo industry? Now, if you want to come in as, as an MRO investor, your your document have to go through the minister's table. Now, because of, and I'm saying that because the minister is, is, is presently involved with the the one that has just been approved, there there will be st st strong hindrance and delay in approving. Or even allowing other competitors to come in. So my point is, must it get to the minister's table for people to invest in the industry? It shouldn't be. We need, we need, we need to, we need to, we need to show and uh, express this ease of doing business. Rather than making it a, a, a document that is just uh, that the vice president just wants and everybody walks away and, and smile. 
That's that's my point on it. But now, uh, the, the, I, I hope I hope the the partners in this project will start before the May thirty first. And again, the fears I express is a is this genuine fear. Even within the same party, we saw when uh, President Obasi when he left power that uh, when when President Yeradua came, he reversed almost all all the privatization he did. So even even if um, an APC wins the next election. There's no guarantee that the incoming president, the incoming president of the president of the APC, will retain or, or continue with the, with the projects that were not completed. He might have a, a different perspective towards it. He might not even be happy with the process of uh, of one of, of this uh, uh, organization. Imagine as the as, as the only bidder for the project. That's my problem. That, that, that's my point. And if you watch all, all, almost all, all all the roadmap projects that came out from the government, every everyone was just by was just a bidder that was that, 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 that came in and was approved as a winner. Apart from the airport concession, and even the airport concession is now a subject of litigation. So, um, what's then uh, going to be, you know? the way forward i would also like to ask uh apart from the fact that you're having this conversation and i know that i've also read you know some of your thoughts uh, that's been published by several uh you know media outlets but have all the stakeholders in the industry um been very vocal about this issue trying to reach out to the government and those responsible to ensure that uh, this becomes a thing for you know the, the country because i mean from all that you have said there's a lot of economic potential for us as a people beautiful economic potential yeah so they, they just has, has, has the potential to grow let me tell you something but, uh, after covid four airlines have come up in nigeria united nigeria value jet green africa and ibom air after covid and this 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 was an industry that everybody thought after COVID the industry will be down for the next three four years. We have come up with four airlines owned by Nigerians. They bought the aircraft. They didn't lease it. So it shows the tenacity, the potentials that are that are bound here when you allow them to express themselves. So that's that's my point. I am not saying uh, the, the 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 one they've just approved by the Federal Executive Council is not a good thing. But I'm saying that you are still holding the country down because of government participation because of government interest allow people to participate the industry we gain the country we gain would all smile would all smile but we cannot when you want to say i did it i did and in that process you don't want any other person you don't want any, any other organization just the one you have the one you own to the, 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 the one you support to be the one that will operate then you're going to hold the country you hold the country down today airlines are just spending money taking those aircrafts out but if we had allowed this, we would have our six. He is not the first minister. Even ministers before him have held down uh, the, 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 the coming in of, of an MRO because they always demand ridiculous, ridiculous offers from, the, from these investors and they eventually run away. This, the MRO is not, it's not something that you will, you will spend there on. You have to bring on practically almost everything apart from the apart from the ground being offered. Every uh, ground and maybe the building, every other thing must come in from outside the country. All equipment and, and even the staff would all be trained outside the country. So it costs a lot of money to invest and set this thing up. And the benefits are there. The benefits are there, no doubt, because your opportunities are open. Oh well. So I'm just thinking to myself, how how then can you know the government of the day or any other government you know uh, buy into this? Uh, we need to cost it down, but I'd like you to just answer in less than a minute. <coughs> Look, I, this this government is done. Uh, I, just, I just can't use the word dusted. So I hope it's for the next government to come in. I will begin to push this narrative that we are, we are, we are, there's so much inter, uh, interference, intervention. And, uh, and, and uh, maybe sort of stop us from the from the government in in, in the running of the aviation industry. One, we do not even need a ministry of aviation in the first place. We didn't have it as of 2015. It was it was it was, in, it was, it was in the ministry of uh, transport, and we're happy with that. But sometime in 2019, they removed aviation from the ministry of transport and made it made an independent ministry, giving so much powers to the minister to interfere with the governance and running of the of the agencies in the industry. Okay, so so, so, so I, I believe if we revert back, if we take if we take a vision back to the Ministry of Transport, if we take if we are like, if we take some of the departments, some of the departments in the ministry or uh, uh, ministry and responsibility given to them are already embedded with the NCAA. Oh, we have to go now. 
Uh, we have to go. Thank you so much, Olumide Ohunaya, for being part of the show. Uh, we appreciate your time. And we can only hope, uh, you know, that the next government uh, will be aware of this, especially those who are politicking now. We'll look into this and probably make that, you know, part of the agenda uh, for their uh, campaign and also uh, what they hope to achieve as they become a government. Thank you so much, have, and we wish you a very good time. We'll have more time next time, eh? Uh, yes, I hope so too as well. Thank you so much. We have to join the newsroom at 9 o'clock uh, for the news brief. Olumide Ohunayo, Assistant Secretary General Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative right here in Lagos. And that's the size of our conversation on The Breakfast this morning. If you missed out on any part of it, it would be great to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Do have a fantastic mon uh, morning, by the way. <laughs>